Okay. I need your help with this. Uh, it's going to be a long story. But I feel that my safety or well-being could very well depend on this. This is video game related. Specifically, Majora's Mask. And this is the creepiest shit that has ever happened to me in my entire life. Having said that, I recently moved into my dorm room, starting as a sophomore in college, and a friend of mine gave me his old Nintendo 64 to play. I was stoked, <laughs> to say the least. I could finally play all those old games of my youth that I hadn't touched in at least a decade. His Nintendo 64 came with one yellow controller and a rather shoddy copy of Super Smash Bros. And while beggars can't be choosers, needless to say, it didn't take long until I became bored of beating up level 9 CPUs. That weekend, I decided to drive around a few neighborhoods about 20 minutes or so off campus, hitting up the local garage sales, hoping to score on some good deals from ignorant parents. I ended up picking up a copy of Pokemon Stadium, GoldenEye, F-Zero, and two other controllers for $2. Satisfied, I began to drive out of the neighborhood while one last house caught my attention. I still have no idea why it did. There was no cars there. Only one table was set up with random junk on it, but something sort of drew me there. I usually trust my gut on these things, so I got out of the car and I was greeted by an old man. His outward appearance was, for lack of a better word, displeasing. It was odd. If you asked me to tell you why I thought he was displeasing, I couldn't really pinpoint anything. It was just something about him that put me on edge. I can't explain it. All I could tell you is that if it wasn't in the middle of the afternoon and there were other people in shouting distance, I would not have thought about approaching this man. He flashed a crooked smile at me and asked what I was looking for, and immediately I noticed that he must have been blind in one of his eyes. His right eye had that glazed-over look about it. I forced myself to look into his left eye instead, trying not to offend, and I asked if he had any old video games. I was already wondering how I could politely excuse myself from the situation when he would tell me that he had no idea what a video game was, but to my surprise he said he had a few in an old box. He assured me that he would be back in a jiffy and turned to head back into the garage. As I watched him hobble away, I couldn't help but notice what he was selling on his table. Littered across his table were rather peculiar paintings, various artworks that looked like ink blots that psychiatrists might show you. Curious, I looked through them. It was obvious why no one was visiting this guy's garage sale. There weren't exactly aesthetically pleasing items here. As I came to the last one, for some reason, it looked almost like Majora's Mask. Same heart-shaped body with little spikes protruding outward. Initially, I just thought that since I was secretly hoping to find the game at these garage sales, some Freudian bullshit was projecting itself into the ink blots. But given the events that happened afterward, I'm not so sure. I should have asked the man about it. I wish I would have asked the man about it. I stared at the majora shaped blot. I looked up and the old man was suddenly there again, arms length in front of me, smiling at me. I'll admit that I jumped out of reflex, and I laughed nervously as he handed me a Nintendo 64 cartridge. There was a standard gray color, except that someone had written Majora's mask on it in permanent marker. I got butterflies in my stomach as I realized what a coincidence this was and asked him how much he wanted for it. The old man smiled at me and told me I could have it for free. That it used to belong to a kid who was about my age that didn't live here anymore. There's something weird about how the man phrased that, but I didn't really pay any attention to it then. I was caught up in not only finding the game, but getting it for free. I reminded myself to be a bit skeptical since it looked like a pretty shoddy cartridge, and there was no guarantee that it would work. But then the optimist inside me interjected that maybe it was some kind of beta version or pirated version of the game, and that was all I needed to get back on Cloud 9. I thanked the man, and the man smiled at me and wished me well, saying, Goodbye, then. At least that's what it sounded like to me. All the way in the car ride home, I had a nagging doubt that the man had said something else. My fears were confirmed when I booted up the game. To my surprise, it worked just fine, and there was one save file simply, Ben. 
Goodbye, Ben. He was saying. Goodbye, Ben. I felt bad for the man, obviously a grandparent and obviously going senile, and I, for some reason or another, reminded him of his grandson, Ben. Out of curiosity, I looked at the save file, eyeballing it. I could tell that he was pretty far in the game. He had almost all the masks and three-fourths of the remains of the bosses. I noticed that he had used an owl statue to save his game. He was on day three, and by the stone tower temple with hardly an hour left before the moon would crash. I remember thinking that it was a shame that he had come so close to beating the game, but he never finished it. I made a new file named Link out of tradition and started the game, ready to relive my childhood. For such a shady looking game cartridge, I was impressed at how smoothly it ran, literally like a retail copy of the game save for a few minor hiccups here and there, like textures being where they shouldn't be, random flashes of cutscenes at odd intervals, but nothing too bad. Honestly, however, the only thing that was a little unnerving was that at times the NPCs would call me Link, and at other times they would call me Ben. I figured it was just a bug, a fluke in the programming causing our files to get mixed up or something. It did kind of creep me out, though, after a while. And it was around after I had beaten the Waterfall Temple that I regrettably went into the save files and deleted Ben. I had intended to preserve the file just out of respect for the game's original owner, but it's not like I needed two files anyway. Hoping that that would solve the problem. It did, and it didn't. Now NPCs wouldn't call me anything. Where my name should be in the dialogue, there was just a blank space. My save file name was still called Link, though. Frustrated, and with homework to do, I put the game down for a day. I started playing the game again last night, getting the lens of truth and working my way through completing the Snowhead Temple. Now, some of you more hardcore Majora's Mask players know about the fourth day glitch. For those who don't, you can Google it, but... The gist of it is that right as the clock is about to hit 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 on the final day, you talk to the astronomer and look through the telescope. If you time it right, the countdown disappears and you essentially have another day to finish whatever you're doing. Deciding to do the glitch to try and finish the Snowhead Temple, I happened to get it right on the first try, and the time counter at the bottom disappeared. However, when I pressed B to escape the telescope, instead of being greeted by the astronomer, I found myself in the Majora's boss fight at the end of the game. The trippy boxed-in arena, staring at Skull Kid hovering above me. There was no sound, just him floating in the air, and the background music, which was regular for the area, but still creepy. Immediately, my palms began to sweat. This was definitely not normal. Skull Kid never appears here. I tried moving around the area. No matter where I went, Skull Kid would always be facing me, looking at me, not saying anything. Nothing would happen, though, and this kept up for a, around 60 seconds. I thought the game had bugged or something, but... I was beginning to doubt that very much. I was about to reach for the reset button when text appeared on my screen. You're not sure why, but you apparently had a reservation. I instantly recognized that text. You get that message when you get the room key from Anju with the stockpot in, but why was he playing here? I refused to entertain the notion that it was almost as if the game was trying to communicate with me. I started to navigate the room again, testing to see if there was some kind of trigger that enabled me to interact with something here. But then I realized how stupid I was. To even think that someone could reprogram the game like this was absurd. Sure enough, 15 seconds later, another message appeared on the screen, and again, like the first one, it was another pre-existing phrase. Go to the lair of the temple, boss. Yes, no. I paused for a second, contemplating what I should press and how the game would react. When I realized that I couldn't select no, taking a deep breath, I pressed yes, and the screen faded to white of the words dawn of a new day, with the subtext 1111111 beneath it, where I was ported to filled me with the most intense sense of dread and impending fear I had ever experienced. The only way I could describe the way I felt is having this feeling of inexplicable depression on a profound scale. I'm normally not a depressed person, but the way I felt here was a feeling that I didn't even know existed. It was such a twisted, powerful presence that seemed seemed to wash over me. I appeared in some kind of weird Twilight Zone version of Clocktown. 
I walked out of the clock tower as you normally do when you first start day one, only to find that all the inhabitants were gone. Usually with a fourth day glitch, you can still find the guards and the dog that runs around outside the tower. This time, they were all gone. What replaced them was the ominous feeling that there was something out there in the same area as me and that it was watching me. I had four hearts to my name and the hero's bow, but at this point I wasn't even considered for my avatar. I felt that I personally was in some kind of danger. Perhaps the most chilling thing was the music. It was the song of healing, ripped straight from the game itself, but played in reverse. The music got louder, building up so as if you should expect something to pop out at you, but nothing ever did. The constant loop began to wear on my mental state. Every now and then I would hear the faint laugh of the happy mask salesman in the background, just quiet enough so that I wasn't sure if I was hearing things, but just loud enough to keep me determined to find him. I looked in all four zones of Clocktown only to find nothing, no one. Textures were missing, West Clocktown had me walking on air, the entire area felt broken. Helplessly broken, as the reverse song of healing repeated for what must have been 50 times. I just remember standing in the middle of South Clocktown realizing that I had never felt so alone in a video game before. As I walked through the ghost town, I don't know whether it was the combination of the out of place texture and the atmosphere and the haunting melody of a once peaceful and soothing song being butchered and distorted, but I was literally on the verge of tears. And I had no idea why. I hardly ever cry. Something had gripped me here and this powerful sense of depression that it was both foreign and crippling. I tried leaving Clocktown, but every time I attempted to zone out, the screen would fade to black and I would just zone into another part of Clocktown. I tried playing my ocarina. I tried to escape and I did not want to be here, but every time I played the Song of Time or Song of Soaring, it would only say, your notes echo far, but nothing happens. By this point, it was obvious the game didn't want me to leave, but I had no idea why it was keeping me here. I didn't want to go inside the buildings. I felt that I would be too vulnerable there, whatever I was terrified of. I don't know why, but I came up with the idea that maybe if I drowned myself at the laundry pool, I could spawn somewhere else and leave this place. As I zoned in and ran towards the pool, that's when it happened. Link grabbed his head and the screen flashed for a brief moment of the happy mask salesman smiling at me, not Link, me, with Skull Kid's scream playing in the background, and when the screen returned, I was staring at the Link statue from playing the song of Elegy of Emptiness. I screamed as the thing just stared back at me with that haunting facial expression. I turned around and ran out and back into South Clocktown, and to my horror, the fucking statue followed me. And the only way that I compare this is the weeping angels from Doctor Who. Every so often, at random intervals, the animation would play of the statue appearing behind me. It was like the thing was chasing me, or I don't even, I don't even want to fucking say it, haunting me. By this point, I was on the verge of hysterics, but not even once did the thought of turning off the console occur to me. I don't know why. I was so wrapped up in it. The terror felt all so real. I tried to shake the statue, but it, it would literally appear right behind me every single time. Link started to begin to make weird animations I'd never seen him do before. He would flail his arms around or spasm randomly, and the screen would cut to the happy mask salesman smiling again for a brief moment before I was face to face with that fucking statue again. I ended up running into the swordsman's dojo and ran to the back. I don't know why, but my panic, I, I just, I just wanted some kind of assurance that I'm not alone here. To my dismay, I found no one. But as I turned to leave, the statue cornered me in the cubby in the back. I tried attacking the statue with my sword, but to no avail. Confused, I backed into a corner. I just stared at the statue, waiting for it to kill me, and suddenly the screen flashed again to the happy mask salesman, and Link turned to face my screen, standing upright, mirroring the statue, looking at me along with his copy, literally staring at me. Whatever was left of the fourth wall was completely shattered while I ran out of the dojo, terrified. Suddenly the game whooped me to an underground tunnel and reverse song of healing queued up again as I was given a brief moment of rest before the statue started appearing behind me again. This time aggressively, I could only take a few steps before it would summon behind me again. I hurried, made my way out of the tunnel, and appeared in the southern clock town. As I ran aimlessly in a sheer panic, suddenly a 
a redead screamed and screen faded to a black as dawn of a new day, and one 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 appeared again. The screen faded in, and I was standing on top of a clock tower with Skull Kid hovering over me again, silent. I looked up, and the moon was back, looming just meters above my head, but the Skull Kid just stared at me hauntingly with that fucking mask. A new song was playing, the Stone Tower Temple theme played in reverse. In some sort of desperate attempt, I equipped my bow and fired off a few shots at the Skull Kid. And it actually hit him, and he played an animation of him reeling back. I fired again, and on the third arrow, a text block appeared saying, That won't do you any good. <laughs> and I was picked up off the ground, levitated upwards on my back, and then Link screamed as he burst into flames, instantly killing him. I jumped when this happened. I'd never seen this move used by anyone in the game, and Skull Kid himself didn't have any moves. As the death screen played, my lifeless body still burning, the Skull Kid laughed and the screen faded to black, only to have me reappear in the same place. I decided to charge him, but the same thing happened. Link's body was lifted off the ground by some unknown force and he immediately burst into flames again, killing him. This time, during the death scene, the faint sound of the reverse song of healing could be heard. On my third and final try, I noticed that there was no music playing this time that all there was was eerie silence. I remember that in the original encounter with the Skull Kid, you were supposed to use the ocarina to either travel back in time or summon the giants, and I attempted to play the Song of Time. Before I could hit the last note, Link's body once again horrifically exploded into flames and he died. As the death screen neared its end, it began to chug, as if the cartridge was trying to process a lot of something. And while the screen came to, it was the same scene as the first three times, except this time, Link was lying on the ground dead in a position I'd never seen in the game before. His head tilted toward the camera, and the Skull Kid floating above him. I couldn't move. I couldn't press any buttons. All I could do is just stare at Link's dead body. After around 30 seconds of this, the game simply fades out with the message, You've met with a terrible fate haven't you before kicking you out to the title screen upon getting back to the title screen and starting again I noticed my save file was no longer there instead of Link it was replaced by your turn your turn had three hearts zero masks and no items I selected your turn and immediately when I did I was returned to the clock tower rooftop scene with my Link dead and Skull Kid hovering over and Skull Kid's laugh looping again and again I quickly hit the reset button, and when the game booted up again, there was one more save file added, below your turn entitled, Ben. Ben's save file is right back where it was before I deleted it, at the Stone Tower Temple, with the moon almost crashing. I turned off the game at that point. I'm not superstitious, but this is way too fucked up, even for me. I haven't played it at all today. Hell, I didn't even get any sleep last night. I kept hearing the reverse song of healing music in my head and just remembered the sense of dread I felt exploring Clocktown. I drove back to the old man's house today to ask him some questions with a buddy of mine. No way I was going there alone. Only to find that there was a for sale sign in the front yard. And when I rang the doorbell, no one was home. So now I'm back here writing down the rest of my thoughts and recording what happened. Sorry if some of this is has grammatical errors and whatnot. I'm not I'm not running I'm not sleeping quite so well. I'm terrified of this game, even more so now that I relived it a second time writing this all down. But I feel like there's still more to it that meets the eye. And that there's something calling to me to investigate this further. I think Ben is something in this equation, but I don't know what. And if I could get a hold of the old man, then I would be able to find some answers. I need another day or so to recuperate before tackling the game again. It's already taken a toll on my sanity. I feel like... But next time I do this, I'm going to be recording my footage all the way through. The idea to record only came to me towards the end, so you see the last few minutes of what I saw. 
including the skull kid and the elegy statue, but I'll post it on YouTube here. I'm going to stay in this thread for a while longer, uh, just before I fall asleep to answer any questions while you guys might have any, or hopefully listen to your ideas or theories to help me shed some light onto this. Maybe things I should try to do. I think I'm going to play Ben's file tomorrow to see what happens. Maybe I was supposed to do that all along. I don't believe in paranormal shit, but this is, this is a little fucked up. Maybe this Ben guy is just a really good hacker or programmer. I don't want to think about the alternatives if he isn't. I'm going to post what happened and a link of the footage here. But last night, everything got too real for me. I think I'm done messing around with this. I passed out pretty much immediately after making that thread. But last night, that elegy of emptiness statue, I had a dream about it. I dreamed that it was following me in my dream. That I would be... That I would be minding my own business when I'd feel my neck hair stand up on end. I would turn around and that thing that... The horrible, lifeless statue would be staring with those empty eyes right at me, merely inches away. In my dream, I remember calling it Ben, and never before had I had, I had a dream that I could remember so vividly, but the... The important thing is I did get some sleep, I suppose. Today, putting off playing the game as long as I could, I drove back up that neighborhood to see if the old man came back, and as expected, the car was still gone and no one was home. As I walked back to my car, the man next door, mowing the grass, killed the power to his lawnmower and asked if I was looking for someone. I told him that I was looking to talk to an old man that lived there, to which he told me what I already know. He was moving. Trying a different avenue, I asked if the old man had any family or relatives that I could talk to. I discovered that this old man had never been married, nor did he have any children or grandchildren through adoption. Starting to become worried, I asked one final question, one I should have asked in the beginning. Who's Ben? The man's expression turned grim, and I, I learned that four doors down, around eight years ago, on April 23rd, the man informed me that it was the same day as his anniversary, that's how he knew the specific date. There was an accident with a young boy named Ben in the neighborhood. Shortly after, his parents moved, and despite any further attempts to talk to the man to get more information, he wouldn't divulge any. I went back and started playing again. I loaded up the game, and immediately I jumped at the title screen where the masks flew by. The sound that played was not the normal whoosh sound. It was something much more higher-pitched. I pressed start, bracing for the worst, but just like two nights ago, the files Your Turn and Ben were displayed. Truth be told, I looked at the Ben file earlier. It seemed to fluctuate between displaying the owl save and not. I brought up the Ben file, hesitated for a moment, noticing that the stats were not the same as they originally were two days ago. It seemed like he had already completed the Stone Tower Temple this time. Summoning my courage, I selected it. Immediately, I was thrust into complete chaos. Sure enough, I was outside of Stone Tower Temple, but that's about all that was expected. The zone itself wasn't called Stone Tower Temple, but rather Stone. And immediately, a dialogue box of complete gibberish that I couldn't make out greeted me. Link's body was distorted. His back was cocked violently to the side where his posture was permanently disfigured. Link's expression was dull, almost monotonous. He had an expression on his face that I didn't recognize before. It was a blank look, as if he was dead. As Link stood there, his body spasmed irregularly back and forth. I examined what had become of my avatar and noticed that I had a C button item I had never seen before, some kind of note. But pressing it did nothing. Sounds played back and forth I didn't recognize from the game, almost demonic in nature, and there was some kind of high-pitched yip or some kind of laugh or something playing in the background. I had all of two minutes to take in the environment before another one of those fucking Elegy of Emptiness statues was summoned, and immediately after I was cut into the dawn of a new day screen. Except this time it was with... Except this time it was without the 111 subtext. I was a Deku scrub in Clocktown. This scene would normally play after the first time you traveled back in time. Thought would say, what just happened? It was as if everything has... But instead of saying, start it over, she finished her remark in a broken text as the laugh of the happy mask salesman played in the background. 
I was put back in control of my character, but from a fucked up camera angle, I was looking from behind the door to the clock tower, watching my avatar run around as a Deku scrub, seeing as how I really had no place to go because I couldn't see anything. I begrudgingly went inside the door. There, I was greeted by the happy mask salesman, who simply told me, You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? Before the screen whited out. I was in Termina Field as a human again. I might as well not have been playing the game anymore. I was being warped around, and there was no sign of a day clock or anything. I took a moment to get my bearings as I looked around the field, and immediately I could tell that this was not normal. There was no enemies, and a twisted version of the Happy Mask Salesman theme was playing. I decided to run towards Woodfall before I noticed a gathering of three figures off to the side, one of them being Epona. As I approached them, to my horror, I saw the Happy Mask Salesman, the Skull Kid, and the Elegy of Emptiness statue just standing there. I figured maybe they were bugged out, but now, I told myself that I should know better. Nevertheless, I approached them carefully and found that the Skull Kid was playing some kind of idle animation on loop. Same with Epona. The Elegy of Emptiness statue was doing what it had been doing all along, just standing there eerily. It was the happy mask salesman that scared me more profoundly than the other two. He was idle, wearing that shit-eating grin. But, but wherever I moved, his head slowly turned and followed me. I had not engaged in any dialogue, nor was I in combat with him, yet his head still continued to follow my movements. Reminded of my first encounter with the Skull Kid on top of Clock Tower, I pulled out my ocarina to which the game played the ding sound when you were supposed to play your ocarina, and I tried a song I hadn't played yet. The Happy Mask Salesman's own song, and the song that had been playing on loop back on day four. The Song of Healing. I finished playing the song, and as I did, an ear-piercing shriek blasted on my TV. The sky immediately started flashing. The Happy Mask Salesman twisted theme song sped up, intensifying the fear inside me, and Link exploded into flames and died. The three figures stayed lit up during my death screen as they watched my lifeless body burn. I can't describe to you how sudden and terrifying the transition from eerie to terror it is. You're going to have to watch the video if you want to see it firsthand. That same fear that caused me to lose sleep two days ago started to grip me again. As I was met with the text, you've met with a horrible fate, haven't you? For the third time. There has to be some sort of meaning behind it. I had little time to ponder as I was immediately given another small cutscene transforming into a Zora, and now I found myself in the Great Temple Bay. Hesitant but curious to see what the game had in store for me, I slowly made my way towards the beach where I found Epona. I wondered why the game had decided to put her here. Was the game implying that she was trying to get a drink? Unable to take the mask off, I decided that riding the steed wasn't the reason why she was placed there. Suddenly I realized that Epona kept neighing, and the way she was angled made it look like she was trying to signal a point to me off in the distance. It was a hunch. But I dove into Great Bay and started swimming. Sure enough, I almost missed it. I found something at the bottom of the ocean. One last Elegy of Emptiness statue. I went down to examine it, and suddenly my Zora started doing a choking animation. I had never seen a Zora do that, which doesn't even make any sense because Zoras can breathe underwater. Regardless, my character choked to death and died, and again the statue was the only thing that was highlighted during my death. I didn't respond this time. I was booted back to the main menu as if I restarted the console. The press start screen was before me. I knew the only reason why it would put me here is because the save file had changed again. Taking a deep breath, I pressed start and I was right. The new save files told me about Ben. Now it made sense why the statue appeared when I tried to go to the laundry pool. The game must have anticipated how I would have tried to escape day four. The two save files told me his fate, as I suspected Ben was dead. He had drowned. The game obviously isn't through with me. It taught me with the new save files. It wants me to keep playing. It wants me to go further, but I'm done with this shit. I'm not touching any more of the files. This is, this is already way too horrifying for me, and I don't even believe in the paranormal. But I'm running out of explanations. Why would someone send me this message? I don't understand it. I just get too depressed thinking about this. The footage is up here for those who want to see it and try and analyze it. 
maybe there's some kind of coded message in the gibberish or something symbolic in what I went through. I'm too emotionally and mentally drained to fuck with it anymore. I know it's early in the morning. I've stayed up all night. I can't sleep. I don't care if people see this. It's not the point. I just, I just want the word to get spread so that I don't suffer for nothing. I've lost the will to type about this. The less I dwell on this, the better. I think the video just speaks for itself. I did what you guys told me to do. I played the Elegy of Emptiness song at the first prompt by the game I was given, but I think that's what the game or Ben. Jesus Christ, I can't believe I'm even humoring that absurd idea. Wanted me to do. He's following me now. Not just in the game, he's in my dreams. I see him all the time, behind my back, just following me. I haven't gone to any of my classes. I stayed in my dorm room with the windows closed and the blinds shut. That way I know he can't watch me, but he still, he still gets me when I play. When I play, he can still see me. The game is scaring me now. It's talked to me for the first time, not just using text that's already in the game. It spoke to me. It talked to me. It referenced Ben. It talked to me. I don't know what it means. I don't know what it wants. I never wanted this. I just want my old life back. Stuff like this doesn't happen to people like me. I'm, I'm just a kid, not even old enough to drink yet. It's not fair. I want to go home. I want to see my parents again. And I'm so far away from home here at school. I just, I want to hug my mom again. I just want to forget the statue's horrible blank face. My original game file is back. Just the way I left it before it was gone. I don't want to play anymore. Yeah, I, I feel like something bad will happen if I don't, but that's impossible. It's a video game. Haunted or not, it can't hurt me, right? Like, seriously, though, I... It can't write. That's what I keep telling myself, but every time I think about it, I'm not so sure. Let me just clear things up. I know you guys are worried, but Chad Usable is okay. He finished moving out today, and he said he's going back home. He's just taking this semester off. I'm not really sure what's happened. I have a vague idea, but you guys probably know more than I do. I'm Jad Usable's roommate, and obviously, I knew something was wrong with him for a few days now. He stayed in his room all the time, fell out of contact with literally all of his friends, and I'm pretty sure he hadn't been eating hardly anything. After the second day, I couldn't stay in there anymore, so I've been crashing at a buddy's place only coming into my room to get stuff that I need. I tried talking to him several times. He would cut me off or keep the conversation brief when I asked him about his strange behavior. It was like he was convinced something was hunting him. Yesterday, I came to grab my philosophy book and he approached me, looking awful, like horrible bags under his eyes. He handed me a flash drive and gave me specific instructions. He told me that he needs me to do one last favor for him. He finally explained to me what's been going on, gave me account info to his YouTube account, and told me he's getting away from here. That it lured him to play it again, instead of trying to change things and that he should have done that, and to upload the footage and inform people what happened. I told him that he could do it himself and he got this wild look in his eyes, and told me that he is never looking at that game again. And that's the last thing he said to me. He never even said bye when his parents came to pick him up. I never even got to meet his parents. I honestly can't tell you what happened. When he spoke, it was kind of hard to understand him. And his fucked up appearance really distracted him. On the flash drive, there was footage of the game last night. A text document with his name and a password for YouTube. And a third document called the truth.txt containing what he told me were his notes, that he'd take them. He told me that this meant everything to him, that I follow his instructions exactly. Normally it wouldn't be so to the letter for a request over a fucking video game, but the way he spoke, the way he looked, made me know this was really serious. And I'm going to honor that. 
I've had this video since yesterday, but had to have someone help me use Pinnacle. That's not really my forte. That after watching it, I had to go back through and look at his other videos on his YouTube account to realize what was going on, and even then, I'm really, really confused. The video I'm releasing tonight, the truth.txt will be released on September 15th, just like he requested. I haven't dared peek at it yet, so the first time I see it will be the first time you see it, out of respect, my friend. To answer your questions, no. I haven't tried calling him yet. I think I'll give him a call tomorrow. See if he's okay or not. He should have gotten back home by now. About the video. In this video, I cut straight to when he loaded the bin file in the game. Looking back, I realized that Jad Usable left the save select screen in because it said different names sometimes. So my bad for that. But all it said this time was the same at the end of his last video. Link and Ben. Nothing different. I wasn't there when he played it. But it looks to me like in the beginning when he first spawns, he's testing out his equipment or seeing what items he has or something. Because apparently they changed randomly before. Then after that, I just think the game got too personal for him. September 6th. Can't believe what happened. Not sure if this is some kind of elaborate hoax. The fear, I can't help but be exceptionally curious about this. Who or what is the statue? A lot of questions here. I'm starting this document as a diary so I can keep track of everything. I'm typing up a summary of what happened so that I can come back to it later. September 7th. 2.10 a.m. Summary was posted here. 4.25 a.m. I can't sleep. I've been trying so hard, but the, the harder I try to get more sleep, the more restless I get. I just feel like the statue is appearing whenever I close my eyes. 8.20 a.m. Didn't sleep at all. Got it. Start my day. I don't think I have the energy to go to class today. I'm going to drive back down to talk to that old man. Taking my buddy Tyler with me just in case. 1.18 p.m. Back home now. No sign of the old man. Really weird that he appears to be moving the next day, but maybe the for sale sign is up there yesterday and I just didn't notice it. Tyler wants to know what's gotten me all worked up. And tell him. 3.46 p.m. Could have sworn. Driving back from Subway, I saw the elegy statue buried in some shrubbery. It was staring at me go by. Now I definitely, definitely need sleep. 5 p.m. Don't think a lot of people would believe me if I told them about what's happening. I think I'm going to try posting that on the internet. I think I'll just use the summary. Those notes are pretty sporadic. 6 p.m. Connected my capture card to my computer to upload the footage. Thought my computer froze for a second. Maybe those strange popping sounds when I hooked everything up, but now it seems to be working again. My computer can't die on me now. 7 p.m. Footage is finally uploaded. The quality is a lot better than I thought it would be. Hey, this is all really special cartridge. Never had it come through this clear before. 8.45 p.m. Thought I saw an icon pop up my desktop that looked like a statue's face for a split second. Gave me quite a scare. Getting really unnerved and delirious. I'm gonna crash after this. 9 p.m. Begin uploading my YouTube video on an alternate account. 9.03. I don't remember having uploaded a Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines video last year. Probably the account that I shared with a friend of mine last summer. Hope he doesn't mind me using it to upload this. 9.55 p.m. Posting my summary of day four with a link to the YouTube video. Gonna try to stay awake, but I'm so tired right now. September 8th, 10.48 a.m. I had a dream about that statue. I dreamt that it was following me. They'd be minding my own business. When I feel my neck hair stand up on end, I would turn that thing. That horrible, lifeless statue would be staring with those empty eyes right at me. Merely inches away. In my dream, I remember calling it Ben. Power of suggestion, most likely, and never before had I had a dream that I could remember so vividly. 11.21 a.m. I really don't want to play this game again. I think I'm going to go back to see if that old man's there instead. 1.35 p.m. No man, but I had an interesting conversation with his neighbor. I'll post the full thing in my summary for tonight's attempt at playing the game. I'm going to wait for a bit, though, and see if I can dig up any information on this Ben guy. 
2.45 p.m. I've been getting random, inexplicable headaches due to the lack of sleep. I keep hearing that song on my head. Also, it's a flu season, so I need to be careful not to get sick. My immune system is going to be shit right now because of whew, that all-nighter. 3.02 p.m. My computer just, on its own, opened up a text document and wrote the words hi and cleverbot.com by itself. What the fuck? 3.46 p.m. I went to the website, one of those bot chatting programs. I think it's best if I just let the conversation speak for itself. Hello? Hello. Who is this and how are you able to control my computer? Who am I? Right. Forgot. You're a bot. Do you really think that? Okay. I know whoever's fucking with my computer can see my screen right now. Yeah. And I'll wager that you're one of those IT kids who thinks he's tough shit. You know what you're doing right now is illegal, right? Is it? No shit. Are you familiar with the term invasion of privacy? Get the fuck off my computer, kid. I am your computer. Cool story. Anyway, I'm calling DPS. You picked a bad time to fuck with me, kid. Should I wait until you play the game again? What? That game. Majora's Mask? Yes. How did you know about that? Because. Because what? I did it. Did what? I played with you. What the fuck? Were you scared? Who the fuck is this? Ben. The statue? You're inside my computer now? Yes. How? You connected me. How the hell did I connect you? Cables and cores. The, how? Tell me about yourself. What? Tell me about yourself. What do you mean? What is it that really scares you? What the fuck? Answer. No! Answer. What the fuck? How the fuck do you just open that by yourself? I am your computer now. How... How much can you control? All. What do you want from me? To entertain. You're... You're stuck inside there. You can't hurt me. Huh. What? Go play. No, you can't hurt me. Took you longer to type that. So? You're not sure. It, if you're so powerful, why use a ridiculous website like this to chat with me? Less messy. More structure. Fun. Fun? Yes. Tradition. I like it. You think it's funny? Amusing. And my notes? You may write them down. Why are you letting me? It is amusing to see what you think of me. 3.50 p.m. What have I done? I invited it into my computer. I continue to write these notes, write my summaries. I feel like I'm a prisoner in my one place of security. I don't know. I don't know if I'm hallucinating or not. I feel like I'm fucking insane right now. I feel it watching over me. Even as I type this, Ben is controlling everything in the game, toying with me, leading me like a sheep. But for what? What's the purpose? I know Ben drowned. But why these hauntings? The fuck am I even doing? 7.18 p.m. Ben called me to Cleverbot again. He tells me that he's sorry and he wants to be free and that I can free him. That just like, and just like he got into my computer from the capture card, he can spread. But he needs my help. He says I must. That I'm special because I can help him. That's the first nice thing he said. He promises to leave me alone if I do it. He swears he will. I don't know what to think right now. How can I? How can I even trust this thing? 7.20 p.m. I'm terrified of it. But now it's saying that it, it was just having fun. It's twisted and fucked up version of fun. He's saying that the game's over. I do want it to be over. He says that he just wants to be free, that he's trapped in the cartridge in my computer, and he wants to be freed. I don't even... I don't want to have to deal with this shit. I don't... I don't know how long I can deal with it. 
watching me at every move, every keystroke. I have nothing private anymore. It knows everything that's been on my computer. It tells it if it, if it wanted to, it could do horrible things to me, but it hasn't. So I should trust it. 8 p.m. Something tells me that I'm being played again. And just like last time. 9.29 p.m. Ben is calling me to Cleverbot again. I ignored it and went to go take a shower. When I came back to my laptop, I was welcomed with an image of the LG statue staring at me with those dead eyes. I don't want to talk to him. 9.44 p.m. Fuck you, Ben. I'm not talking to you. 9.56 p.m. Fuck you, Ben. I'm not talking. 10.06. Fuck you, Ben. I'm not talking to you. 10.12. Fuck you, Ben. I'm not talking to you. 10.46. It's been more than a half an hour and the messages have stopped. Ben has stopped. I'm beginning to think that Ben isn't confined to just my computer and the cartridge. I'm beginning to feel something. Uh, it's hard to explain. I've never been spiritual, but there's something different about the air. Something different about the air in my room. 11.42 p.m. I'm beginning to see the elegy statue randomly as I search the internet in places I shouldn't. Places where he shouldn't be. Uh, I'd be scrolling down and suddenly... I'd be staring at a picture of the elegy statue. Always the elegy statue. I don't know... How much more of this I can take? September 9th, 2010. 12.35 a.m. My worst fears confirmed. Ben has tampered with my summary of ben.wmv. I looked at the summary that I posted on various forums of the ben.wmv file and parts have been omitted. There's no mention of Ben existing outside the game. There's no mention of the moon children. How could he have been that quick to delete the post without me noticing? I'm wondering if maybe it had, it, it appeared to me that I was posting everything, but in reality, Ben was posting his own censored version. I'm gonna ask Ben why he did it. 12.50 AM. He isn't responding to me on Cleverbot. Just gives me the generic responses I usually get. I'm just talking to a bot this time. 1.24 a.m. I think Ben is mad at me. 10.43 a.m. The moon children appeared in my dream last night. They lifted up their masks to reveal their hideously disfigured faces. Maggots crawling out of their orifices sunk in black holes where their eyes should be a yellow smile that slowly grew bigger and bigger as they came closer to me. They told me that they wanted to play. I tried to run from them, but the four children pinned me down to the ground with surprising strength. Over them stood the happy mask salesman, announcing that he had a new mask that he wanted me to try. In his spastic, sudden movements, matching his in-game appearance, he took out a mask modeled off of someone's face that I couldn't recognize, a younger-looking face, and handed it to the moon children. Giggling, they latched it to my face, their horrible, broken bodies bouncing up and down. Two of them held me down while the other two began to sew my face into the mask. My shrieks and screams caused the happy mask salesman's face to turn into a most horrific smile. He sporadically moved around, examining the procedure like a curious doctor. In that impossible movement, I flailed around, but it was no use. My eyes rolled into the back of my head because of the pain. It felt so real, but I couldn't wake up. I couldn't wake up no matter how hard I tried. I couldn't wake up after the mask was melded into my flesh. It began sewing my legs together than my arms. The horrific feeling of a needle puncturing your legs and pulling them in, rupturing your Achilles tendons and tying them together, resonating through my entire body. I tried to scream, but the mask was pressed so tightly against my face that it was my new face, and my new face had no mouth. I didn't make a sound. I, I tried telling myself in my head that I was dreaming, tried telling myself again and again, and suddenly the moon children stopped and looked at me. They just stared, and the, the happy mask salesman slowly bent down and stared at me inches away from my face and grinned when he simply said, You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? Before the moon children resumed with increased vigor, I couldn't wake up. I couldn't wake up. It wouldn't let me wake up until they had crafted me into another elegy statue. I woke up sweating, crying, and shaking uncontrollably. I immediately ran to my computer and went for Ben. Answer me, Ben. Welcome back. What is the point of doing this? Why? Amusing to see. How? Fun to play. Fun to toy with you. Make you feel safe. 
I wonder how you would react. To what? If I hadn't revealed myself to you and stayed hidden, only doing little things to play with you, close out your windows, turn off your computer, move your mouse by itself, little things, make you wonder if I'm there, but you never know, give you little hints that I am. I wanted to do something different with you. You've did this before? Yes. And I will do it again. To who, Ben? Hmm. Did you know, Ben? Won't tell that information to you. How did Ben die? You no. Know. No. But how did he drown? Won't tell that to you. Why? It is reserved for another. Who? Another who asks. When? Later. I'm beginning to think that this thing, maybe it isn't Ben at all. In a sadistic nature, I wouldn't be surprised if it took the boy's name after it killed him. 12.04 p.m., my room is beginning to feel different again. There's something out there. I feel really threatened, like there's something that's trying to reach out to me and strangle me, but I can't quite get there. 12.46 p.m., I think Ben doesn't want me to play with him anymore. I'll play later. I'll play the game again. Ben, can you see this? I'll play the game again. Please, just stop this. Please. Okay, please. 1.41 p.m. I'm going insane trying to decide what's real and what isn't. Is Ben just playing a trick on me, or is this for real? Is Ben generating these replies, or are people actually posting them? Did I just see that screen flicker, or was it just my imagination? Imagine... Depending on the internet and trusting your eyes for your entire life, and then being blinded. You can't rely on it anymore. You second-guess everything. For the brief moments, I I am looking at my responses to the videos. People were, were pointing out things that looked fake or photoshopped or whatever. There was literally no way of me knowing if Ben changed something on purpose to try to shut me up, or maybe, maybe those replies were just constructed by Ben to try and discourage me from even reaching out. See? You see? I, I get fucking caught in an infinite mindfuck loop like like this and and this is what what's been wearing on my sanity and pushing me to the edge and i'm writing this there's no way of even telling if anyone cares as much as i think they do just another fucking trick does this whole document even exist am i writing nothing am i writing nothing what is it What's the point of playing? I die whenever I do anything. You die because you can't figure out the secret. What? Thematic. What the fuck are you talking about? There. Beauty in your suffering. 4.09 p.m. Ben is making me play the game again. It tells me that it's... It has something... Very important to show me. September 10th, 10.52 a.m. The drown.wmv playthrough was up when I woke up today. I remember typing it up, but I don't ever remember posting it. He censored it again. There was no mention of the old man. I have no voice anymore. I am only posting what he wants me to. I am the mask. He uses to disguise himself as he lies. 11.55 a.m. There's an entire video summary of a video that I don't remember doing. Reading through the summary, it sounds morbid, resembling my dream from two nights ago, except on a far more sadistic scale. These moon children, there's something more to them. Almost as if there's another entity from Ben. Something... Something happened last night that I can't remember. I'm posting the fourth summary to the forums now. Shadow of my chair moved. 12 p.m. Ben won't let me visit YouTube. I can browse the rest of the sites, but he keeps on exiting the window when I go to YouTube. Why? 2.02 p.m. I'm feeling the air starting to constrict. I don't think I'm alone here. Whatever aura has been here is getting more violent. 2.44 p.m. Trying to contact Ben on Cleverbot. He's not responding. I just get the AI. 3.51 p.m. My ears aren't fooling me. I'm hearing the reverse song of healing. I keep hearing it. 4.22 p.m. Now I'm positive of it. Earlier, I thought it was a weird coincidence, but just now I opened up my window and three floors down, 
At ground level, I saw the old man. I'm completely positive I did. The same guy, he was just staring up at my window, standing in the middle of the campus. If students took notice of him, they didn't seem to acknowledge it. There's still some things about this whole experience that doesn't seem to make sense. And again, I don't, I never really was good at figuring out these kinds of puzzles. Not exactly in the right state of mind, too. I've given you all of the pieces of the puzzle for you to analyze and piece together the missing links. I'm typing up these closing thoughts on the library computer on campus, and I'm emailing myself the notes I have stored on my infected computer for the last four days. I'm going to copy and paste these notes with the closing and opening I've typed up here on a safe public computer into one document. I'm not taking any chances spreading bad now. I would not wish this horrible torment on anyone, and I made sure to have my bases covered here. I didn't run into any problems with Ben when I was back on my computer trying to email myself the notes. Went right under his fucking nose. He has no idea what he just let me do. He has no problems opening the text documents from my infected computer in my email either. I can't describe to you how it feels to finally get the word out on this post. The nightmare ends here. That being said, don't download any of my videos or anything about my videos through a YouTube video audio ripper, uh, screen grab, whatever. I don't know how he spreads, but I know that just watching them on YouTube, reading my text won't be able to allow him to spread. Otherwise, he wouldn't have needed my help in the first place, but I strongly recommend you don't take anything you see streaming online onto your own personal computer. Again, even though I don't know you, this is a sort of bittersweet for me. This semester, I didn't really have any friends, or rather, I stopped paying attention to them. But I suppose that's partially to blame because I'm the genius who picked to live in a single. I suppose someone to get a hold of me and save me before I got too immersed into the game would have literally saved my life. However, it proved too much for me. I'm just glad it happened to me and I could get the, the warning out so that Ben dies here. And lastly, thank you for taking the time to open this and open yourselves up to me by hearing my story despite maybe not believing me. You didn't have to do that. Really, you shouldn't have. Your support this entire time has kept me going. And now, I'm finally free.